my screen that shows the micro price detector. And uh, Gary and I will be going back and forth like we have been for the last uh, several now. We've had uh, FOMC together. We've done a couple non-farm payrolls together. And uh, we're going to continue to bring uh, live sessions like this uh, on these big news announcements. And uh, today's a big one. Uh, we are probably, ex well, we'll talk about what we expect, but I would like to see some continuation of dollar weakness. Uh, but the dollar index did actually exactly what I thought it was going to do for the week, and that was balance out to where uh, I was looking to short it. So we had scalps this week in my trade room on the euro dollar. Uh, we are sitting in positions on New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar that are positive. Those are looking really good. Uh, Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss, New Zealand CAD, New Zealand Swiss. Those trades have been great for us this week. So uh, anyway, Gary, if you want to take it away. So I just want everybody to know on my end, uh, I have the micro price detector running. And I'm going to start putting the auto on here in probably five to 10 minutes, uh, getting ready for the 830 announcement. We again are reviewing non-farm payroll, which is the job report expected to be at 145. Average hourly earnings expected at 0.3% and unemployment rate expected to be 3.7%. Now, none of this really matters to me. You know, whatever happens with these numbers, whether it's positive, 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 negative, 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 it doesn't really matter. All I'm using for trading is the micro price detector to get some volatility and follow along. So my chart settings are fixed. So it's the micro price detector calculation method, fixed 10 pip box sizes. And my script that I run will be doing the same thing. So I'll be monitoring my trades through the morning. Uh, I know that Gary has a, a robot as well that's looking to take some trades. So uh, that's what we're looking to do is just get some volatility, follow some price action this morning, and see if we can end up grabbing a few pips. You know, maybe 30, 40, 50 pips or more would be a great way to top off the week. It's already been a nice profit week. I just closed out actually part of my position on Aussie CAD for 500 pips. So I will certainly take that. So Gary, anything to add? Any uh, charts you want to run through this morning? Do you want me to do anything else with my screen or go ahead, man? I just want to go ahead and make sure that the sound's coming through loud and clear. No audio you audio Loud and clear. Chris, you can hear me? Check your mic. Okay, so then, all right. Unless you want me to lip, uh, I'll lip talk nope, for you. There, 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 there it goes. How can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. All right, fantastic. Well, guys, welcome back uh, to uh, another non-farm payroll. Yeah, yes, me and Chris fighting it out with the market. We've got a couple of things lined up today. In fact, I've got uh, the MPD uh, set up just like uh, um, Chris has got it. Uh, I, I've only selected a few pairs, as you can see right here with my chart. You can take a look. You can see that we've got the euro, uh, euro, pound, uh, uh, JPY, Aussie, and the New Zealand dollar. I killed the uh, Swiss franc. And also took out the Canadian dollar just because we're going to get some Canadian data as well. So I think it might be a little bit uh, choppy, maybe not uh, as uh, as fluent in a direction. But I'm going, to, I'm going to have these three open or these five open up right here. Now what I'm also going to do as well is I'm going to implement trades. I'm going to go ahead and actually straddle the market. I've got an EA running right now that will be straddling the market and looking for a trade setup based off uh, buying and selling above and below the market. Now, as soon as the market breaks down the direction, I'm going to go ahead and enter the trade. Uh, it's going to be self-automated. It's going to enter the trade, and once it enters the trade, it's going to actually have a following, uh, well, at least a, a, a trading stop loss that's going to follow the market and keep up with what the market's doing at the moment right now as long as it continues to buy. I'll have the option to go ahead and cancel my orders. I'll have the option to go ahead and cancel my, my, my open positions, uh, or at least close my open positions, at any time so uh, i'm excited about it i'm going to be watching the market very closely if we go to the actual charts again let's go take a look at the charts and break it down uh, from uh, the dollar index and i'm going to go to the dollar index here and let's see here dollar index uh, i'm going to go to dollar index chart and i believe there it is here uh dollar index all right, so there's the dollar index chart here. I, I like to go to the daily time frame. Look at the way the daily time frame is set up right here. We have seen that we're in a very strong sell at the moment right now. According to my, uh, um, and by the way, Chris, you'll be very happy to see that I've got my smart gauge running right here. And based that. on the smart gauge, we're looking at a very strong sell. And that's because the daily and the one hour both lined up in the same direction. The, if my smart gauge says sell, it means that we've got both time frames, daily and uh, one hour, both in the same direction, which is obviously what we need to see. Now, traders, I am not going to discount that that we may get a bit of choppiness in the market the, this morning, meaning that we've had a bearish move down south in the last few days, 
uh, if it's going to come up again, it's going to be a short-term rally before the market drops back down south. So I'm not going to discount a positive uh, upside move in, in the short term, but then overall I'm still looking for the dollar to go ahead and fall further down south. So uh, I, I think today might be, in my, in, in my opinion, looking at the ADP numbers, ADP numbers came out this, uh, um, uh, this uh, week uh, uh, negative, and uh, in fact the revised numbers also came out negative. They are expecting data this week to be negative on the dollar's uh, uh, average earnings, and that's really what I'm going to look at right here. If you look at the average earnings, we can see the average earnings is projected to be uh, out at 0.3%, down from 0.4% from the pre or the forecast, and and so we're going to be looking at that numbers. I'm not too keen on on looking at the non-farm employment change. I think that number is going to be low, and even if it is high, unless it's up uh, around uh, 200. 200k plus, maybe even more than that, we are going to see a reaction to the market. Also, what's important, traders, is of course the unemployment rate. Um, if we get the unemployment rate staying unchanged over here, that might be a slight positive. I'd like to see that uh, tick down. If it's not going to, then of course uh, we may see some reaction in the market. Uh, overall, definitely feel that the market is going to be bearish today, but because the way the market's set up technically, uh, I'm not going to discount a bit of a rally to the upside. Let's go take a look at the one hour. And this is a clean indication right here. This is what I like to do when I look at the one hour. Uh, I like to go ahead and take a look at the market from the upside uh, on the one hour. And you can see this is the action. This is the price action that took place over the last few days. You see, I look at this and say, all right, we've got, uh, um, we've got price moving down to a wave one right here, wave two. We've got and hit the wave three. Markets pull back. You can see how we're trading below. Uh, I call these blue lines my signal lines. And I call this red line my wave tunnel. So I've got the wave tunnel, got the signal line, both indicating bearish momentum. We've just come off a of wave four right here. So based off that, wave four can be consolidated, which means the market could also do some sort of zigzag right here, then go ahead and work its way back down. That's why I said any sort of upside tech would be short term in my opinion, but then we're going to see the market continue to work its way back down as it looks for the fifth wave down further down south here. So based on where the market's positioned at the moment right now, it is saying to me that we may end up seeing a little bit of uptick, that may be short term, then start to move, way, move the, the, the market a little bit further down in the long term, uh, or at least in the midterm, further down south right here. And that would line up perfectly with what I'm seeing here on my uh, larger time frame, the daily. And you can see traders, if I go to the uh, 8 hour right now, the 8 hours also giving us a nice little U-turn at the top there. We're bearish on the SSL. Sentiment is down on the dollar. So overall, uh, Chris, I'm looking at dollar uh, possibly being midterm bearish. But in the short term, I'm not going to discount a little pop to the upside and then go ahead and fall down. So look for some fake news. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But look for some fake break, uh, fake out to the, top, uh, to the top side and then possibly moving to the downside. This is the reason why I'm going to possibly uh, straddle the market today uh, using this uh, automated EA right here. I'm going to straddle the market, see if we can pick up some pips. And if not, then uh, if the market does rally to the, to the upside and we see a strong pullback down south, then maybe go ahead and reverse that position and only look for sells on the, uh, on the dollar, which means that we'll be buying a pound, uh, pound uh, US dollar, euro US dollar we're buying, uh, we'll be selling. US dollar JPY, we'll be buying New Zealand US dollar and so forth. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Chris, um, do you have anything set up on your end that you're going to be taking action on? Yeah, I, I like that a lot. So uh, just, you know, to kind of recap, I mean, yesterday I was in a webinar and talking about the dollar specifically and just looking left at the highs we had back in May and then the lows we had throughout July and August. Um, you know, I really looked at this for a 50-50 type trade where it, it's, it really is a coin flip today. Um, we, did, we did a great job of looking for the bulls to score a point this week, and they did. So having this high, this high, and a new high, we did look at uh, dollar weakness. We expected that. And so that's why we were long Aussie dollar, long New Zealand dollar, and long Euro dollar. So all of those are paying out nicely this week. Um, you know, if, if traders want to protect, that's certainly not a bad spot to protect and be uh, out of the news with profit, not even worry about the news, whether or not it takes back this uh, movement to the downside, or if we come down and finish and all we're doing is testing these lows. I still think, as Gary mentioned on, on his dollar index, you know, there is an incredible amount of support right here. All these lows, all these lows, all these lows, all this structure right now, 
I mean, I understand that it's October, but it's going to take a lot more than a weak job report to break this dollar. The only thing I think that would really break this dollar is if the market is truly wanting to price in a significantly more dovish Fed. Like they need to, they, the market needs to expect the Fed to cut rates like by another 1% for this to like really start to break structure. So I really think that, uh, and I'm curious your thoughts here, Gary, but something like more of the same is probably easier for the market right now, where it's like, if it comes down to this level, finds lows and just goes back up, wouldn't that be easier for the market just to stay in this, to not really disrupt any, any major structure? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It would be, uh, you know, if you, if you take a look at the larger time frames, as you mentioned earlier on, take a look at larger time frames. I've just opened up the uh, US dollar JPY. We can see the week right here. If it closes like this uh, for the week, it's going to be pretty bearish for the dollar. Now, we also know that there's also trade war taking place right between China and the US. And uh, anytime that there's some good news coming out, we start seeing some weekly uh, JPY. So uh, this, when I, when I look at the chart, and this is very interesting here, Chris, it's like when you look at the chart right here and you look at the, 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 the JPY, like the US dollar JPY, you see that there's going to be support over here from those previous highs over there. And so this looks like it could be a little bounce back up north as the market tries to go north. In fact, if I compress this, uh, and, and this is why I say today, I'm not banking totally on just a negative dollar move. But if you look over here, you can see that, uh, uh, and, and I think every currency is pretty much balanced out on its own uh, when it comes to trading against the dollar, because uh, you have every country that's dealing with certain things in its own uh, in its own way that um, that will change the direction direction of the market, uh, and is not going to be just dollar driven. So if you look over here, we've got very strong support here on the uh, U.S. dollar JPY, and when you look at this, you're thinking, okay, well then then we should see the dollar rally, not selling off. But again, this may be just a short-term dip right here and then a continued rally as trade wars start taking place and we start seeing some better news. And I'm going to bank in for some better news. It's not going to be in the interest of, well, I guess China's in a worse position than what the U.S. is when it comes to trade wars. But at the same time, it's always going to be good for the global economy to have the biggest powerhouses, the U.S. and China, come together and agree on something and then move forward. If it doesn't happen, it may put some pressure on the dollar. But yeah, we've seen this. If the and, and, and the pressure on the dollar will really come from more strong JPY. And so my question always is, if that's going to be the case, how long is the uh, uh, the, the Japanese government going to hold off from intervening if the currency gets too strong? Because that's going to be very very bad for the uh, for the economy. So that's the the this is the uh, US dollar JPY. Now take a look if I go to the US. Uh, this is uh, New Zealand US dollar. Now if you look at New Zealand US dollar you see a different, completely different direction. Now this tells us that price is holding up over here at this level, and we want to see price moving back up. What does that mean? That means dollar weakness to get the New Zealand dollar back up again. Now, is this dollar driven or is this again New Zealand driven? Uh, it's always the question you, that everyone has you know, uh, when they look at these two, uh, these two uh, currencies. If I go to pound US dollar, Look at pound US dollar right here. Pound US dollar this week was choppy and indecisive, but we had a bit of bearish movement over the, you see right here, we had a bit of bearish movement over here that turned the market down to giving us an evening star. So with an evening star, we're expecting price to move back down south, right? Well, again, again, it will be dependent on what happens to the data today. If the data comes out uh, bad, we'll see a rally to the upside. And if we see some positive news out of Brexit, then we'll continue to see the move going long. We saw this week, Chris, I don't know if you picked it up, but we saw a big move in uh, U.S. oil this week. A huge move and in oil, yeah. And the big move in U.S. oil really affected like pound Canadian. Pound Canadian rallied up, didn't sustain that rally, but it rallied up for most of the week. And then we had another move on the Aussie CAD, another big move on the Aussie CAD as well. So the markets are, be, uh, the markets are definitely being driven by a lot of fundamentals that are, I, I call them hidden fundamentals, like U.S. oil and and, uh, and then you get, of course, the trade wars and Brexit that slowly start slipping in some news in between, um, but it's not really scheduled news. Yeah, uh, we, were, we, were loving, we were loving the oil because we were long New Zealand CAD, Aussie CAD, and EuroCAD this week, and both of those popped really nicely. EuroCAD, um, I'm not sure if anybody protected, we were up almost 200, we were up about 200 pips, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we were up, uh, we had 200 and about 10 pips to the high, uh, so I'm sure some traders in my room were taking either 150 to 200 pips out of that. Uh, which is good because we're still looking to buy it. I mean, I still I, I want to buy the dip on Eurocat. I think that looks good to the upside. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
Yeah, CAD's been moving really good. Now we've got some data out uh, to today on CAD. We've got some uh, uh, trade uh, trade balance coming out on CAD. Normally we get Correct. the employment news out on the same time as we have uh, uh, the 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 US employment news, but I think it's going to be next That's week. That's next Friday. We're actually yeah. Going to the calendar next week. Yep. I think. Am I right or wrong, Chris? Ne next Friday, next week, yeah, right? next Friday the eleventh is going to be the CAD news. There we go. All right, yep. there we go. Yeah, CAD news, employment change, and unemployment rate coming out next week. Normally it happens at the same time. That's why I'm not a fan of trading the uh, U.S. dollar CAD during the non-farm payroll because it can be a little choppy when you get the news uh, week on both sides. So it can be a choppy news. But right now we've got about eleven minutes left, quite a bit of time left before the news comes out. I'm going to probably be setting my trades up. About a uh, 30 seconds. I'm gonna have to check my watch, make sure it's 30 seconds. And I'm gonna, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and pop in support and resistance straddles between uh, where price is currently right now. Now I did have the, the, this set up. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I did this. I uh, just set this up, Chris. On um, let me see here. My properties were set at uh, 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 I believe 10 pips. There we go. 10 pips distance, distance right here. I may want to go ahead and change that to 15 and keep that 15 pips apart from each other that might be a little bit better and then my stop loss i've got my stop loss at 10 that might be t a little tight as well i'm going to change that up to about 15 as well on that um take profit i've got my take profit at 50 i can drop that to 45 that gives me a nice uh three to one risk reward ratio on that and then uh, my trading stop i've got that at 10 i'm going to pop that up to 15 as well and trailer market give it a little bit of room to breathe and then um, I'm not using any sort of break-even uh, strategy at this point. I'm going to try and see if I can just trail it. And, and you'll probably hear it as it goes. It's going to be, I'm going to save this to my news. Save it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the uh, the rest of uh, the systems. So let's do this. Let me make sure this is the right one that I chose. Uh, 15, yes it is. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to save the template. And then I'm going to add this template to my uh, to my other chart because uh, I want to make sure that I get the same sort of uh, setups. And there it is, template. Save that. Let me go ahead and save it on this one too. Uh, template and save that. And the same thing here. Uh, template. Save that. All right, good. So I've got the same settings across the board right here. I'm just going to get ready now to rock and roll. So I'm pretty much ready to uh, to let this party get started, Chris. So it's just a matter of now waiting for the market to go ahead and make its move. So I'm going to move to the chart. I've actually set up, you can see right here, Chris, I've gone ahead and set up uh, my charts where I'm looking for, let's do this. Uh, I'm looking for the news. There we go, trading news. I've got it set up now. I want to make sure, Chris, you've got your setup with uh, uh, the exact same as mine. I want to double check that. I think I've got it set at 10 perps on the, um, and let's do this. Uh, chart setting here. All right, so I've got it set up right here on fixed 10 perps. Is yours also 10 perps? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, now, now I've set up my uh, I've set up my uh, uh, my my uh, actual uh, system on 15 pips, which means it gives it, it gives that five pip buffer just because of spread possibly uh, they may increase spreads during this period. Not may, as my my apologies, they will increase they will. spreads yeah. during this period. So I'm increasing the 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 uh, the the, uh, the the trading stops and the 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 positioning of my trade. Uh, 15 pips away from where the current market price is at. So it's giving me a little bit of room. If the market doesn't gap, then uh, we should be fine. If it just rallies up in a direction or dips in a direction, we should be good with that as well. So I've got the right setting here. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the market to go ahead and make its move. Now I'm only focused on the five currency pairs. Now, Chris, are you focused on more than five? I'm going to trade the whole basket. Okay, so you're yep. trading that. I'll see what I can get. That's usually so. If if we do get uh, the flow going in the same direction, you know, dollar strength through dollar weakness, trading the whole basket for me, it's 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 how I can grab you know 30, 40, 50 pips and then start looking to protect and close things up. So, uh, I mean, five is still plenty of currency pairs. You're going to get some good movement today on that too. Hopefully, we see a nice uh, delivered non-farm payroll and not a dud. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's that's always going to be the uh, the issue there, right? Is uh, uh, are we going to see? Are we going to see the market break out in a direction 
and and come back or are we going to see the market uh, go ahead and actually stay out in that direction and not come back again because a lot of times uh, we, we we've had now in the last i don't know chris probably about uh, four or five of these non-farm parallels that have been duds you know just little whippy whippy lashy but not really moving yeah, in the direction of lots of track. <laughs> true story hashtag true story right uh, <laughs> 2003 2000 well 2002 2003 and 2004 was probably the best time we've had with the non-farm peril. Non-farm perils will gap fifth, uh, sorry, uh, gap 250 pips within seconds. And 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 that, and that way, and, and by the way, back in 2003, brokers didn't have this rule about uh, slippage, right? There was no slippage. Yeah, it was guaranteed fact, execution, guaranteed stops. That's it, guaranteed yeah. execution. And so we'd have uh, these these straddle trades. We were perfectly in those market conditions because they would guarantee your entry point. It wasn't the case of like, well, they'll fill you at the next available price. It was like, they will fill you. So within seconds, when we ran a system like this, where you have a quick trading stop, and by the way, we didn't have automation at that time, right? Everything was done manually. We sit in front of the computer and sit with our fingers and pop it in and out as the, as the market rallied. So we didn't have, we didn't have all the tools they have today when it comes to automation. So uh, we'll see how this works out. I'm actually working on a couple other options to, to be able to trade fundamentals, especially with these type of uh, uh, flash news re reactions uh, as, uh, as we get the data coming out. So um, I'm excited about it. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of information um, that we're gonna have to digest once the news comes out uh, based on technical, but we're gonna keep it simple today, right? Uh, we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible. And, and basically what it means is traders is this. And I think Chris has gone through this already. If you take a look over here and you see on the chart, let me go ahead and show the chart right here. If you take a look on the chart right here, you're seeing these blocks forming on the chart. Uh, these blocks are in a 10 block, well, 10 pip blocks, which means that every time price moves up 10 pips, a block is going to form. Now, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be setting up once price goes ahead and or at least the data comes out at 8.30 and I'm going to go ahead and set it up in 15 minutes, uh, uh, no, 15 seconds before the, 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 the market actually reports the data. But once the market goes and breaks out, what we're looking for is direction. Now, you need to have at least three of these blocks in the direction. I know we're going to trade different today. Today is actually going to be just one block. We're going to trade one block in the direction. And that means if the block confirms that we bullish, we can stay bullish. Now, if the market breaks off, if I go ahead and straddle the market like this, and it breaks out in a direction, doesn't matter what direction it's going to break out, but when it breaks out in a direction, we're going to go ahead and ride this wave, and we're going to watch the MPD right here. Now, I am using a trading stop, so which means that if the market comes back, I'm going to be popped. My trading stop is at 10 pips. And I believe, Chris, what we're going to be using today is one block reversal, right? If it reverses us with one block, which is 10 pips, we get out. Is that Correct. right? Yep, that's what I want to use. I want to get, basically, I want to get in and out as quickly as possible. So when we have the same colors, we're riding those profits. And when it changes, we're out. Um, a lot of times, all I'm looking for is if we get two to three blocks in a row in profit and we're in these trades, I want to close them out as, you know, as soon as they change colors or I just close everything up and protect it myself. Absolutely. Okay, so that's going to be crit critical right there. So we're waiting for the market to go ahead and confirm that we have a confirmed breakout. Now, again, I'm going to be strategic. So whether or not the block is going to be uh, confirming entry or not entry for me, it's I'm, I'm straddling. So there's, there's two ways to trade it. One, wait for a block and then get in the block. Uh, uh, Chris is running also a script as well through Smart Trader. So he'll be able to get in based on those conditions. I'm saying I'm going to straddle 15 pips above and below the market based on where the price is trading at, at the time I enter the market. And then if we get picked up, I'm going to be canceling my, my previous order. So if it, the market rallies up, the previous order will be canceled. And then I'm going to trail the market based on a 15 pip trading stop loss. So if the market keeps running, we're going to be trading by 15 pips. So I don't have to really wait for the block to close out bearish because I will automatically be out of the market. Now, I have to also say this. For, for a block to go bearish, all right, for, the, for this block right here to go bearish, it has to really, look what price is trading right now. It has to go through this block and that block, which actually means that we're going to have a 10 pip difference, all right, uh, uh, for each block, which means total 20 pips. So this is actually a 20 pip reversal. It's a 20 pip reversal because it's going to cover this block and it's going to cover the, the second block right here. That means it's a 20 pip block difference. 
So if price moves 20 pips down, it's going to create a bearish block. So just to give you guys a heads up, it has to go at least to, now if it's trading in the middle of that block, then clearly that will only be 15 pips. But if it trades at, at the top of that block, then it needs to go 20 pips to have a reversal. So if we close out with a bullish block like we have here, and then suddenly the market drops, it's got to drop 20 pips right here in order for us to be able to close out. So I've got a 15 pip on mine. 15 pip change, not a 20 pip. So I'm keeping it a little bit tighter, but I'm, I'm going to you know monitor it as it goes along the way. We've got uh, two minutes left again. I'm going to be jumping in on this as soon as we've got the market confirming uh, at least 30 seconds. So we're in the last nine minutes of the clock. So traders, I am going to get ready. Uh, uh, Chris, are you ready for this? I'm ready, man. My scripts are already on the charts and they're just waiting for some movement and uh, waiting to pick up some trades. So I'm ready to well, go. I've been wanting to say this for a long time. Traders. Start your engines. All right. I'm just kidding. Just getting excited here. All right. So we're going to wait to see what happens here. We've got about 30 seconds. Let me see if I've got a, a, a countdown clock right here. Okay. There it is there. I'm at, uh, oh, okay, 35. All right. Seconds. I should start getting ready to start putting this trade in. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're at 40. Uh, 40. It's going to take me five seconds to put it in. 45. All right. Let's go ahead and start putting this in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, check that position, that, that position, that, that, and that. I'm ready to rock and roll. You hear the noise coming through? It's going to pick me up. I can actually go to my smart trader now. There we go. And monitor the trade. You can see there. It's in. And as you hear this go tick, 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 it's either going in my favor, canceling orders, or it's not. Okay, so I'm selling on the uh, US dollar JPY. Looks like I had a buy in and out on the euro and the JPY. The other two aren't picked up yet. Uh, nope. Looks like not picked up yet. Number one, Gary, we, we had a missing job report, but we had a, a, a better unemployment rate. We went from 3.7 to 3.5 on the unemployment rate, but the job number was 136 versus 145. I'm looking for average earnings. I don't see it yet. So, right, so here it is and, uh, I'm watching Euro dollar on one of my other screens. Euro dollar is going to the upside by about 15, 20 pips. A lot of chop going on right now. Let's refresh the factory. Ooh, look at that. 3.5%. Yeah, that was up. We didn't expect that. Go average down. earnings. Oh, wow. three tenths, one percent missed. Really? But look at the average earnings. Average wow, earnings that's down. Way off. The, okay, that should. I mean, we should see dollar weakness coming from that. With you know, again, unemployment rate. I mean, honestly, that's a bunch of baloney. I, I mean, okay, so less people are in the job. Less people in the workforce. There's underemployment. Right. Uh, but zero, zero point zero. That's a big gouge out of people's paychecks right there. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We got to take a look at the terminal right here. And I've got orders still sitting over here. Buy, stop, buy, stop. New Zealand, Aussie's orders, they haven't been picked up. Uh, let me go ahead and see the trader right here. Have you been filled on anything yet, Gary? I'm not in any trades right now. Oh, man, look, I got chopped up. Look here, US dollar JPY. Uh, you're, uh, this is choppy right here. Pound US dollar got chopped up on the pound US dollar. So very quickly spiked. This could be spread. Now, this is traded just to let everyone know. I'm running a demo on this because the first time I'm running this system, Run a demo because I want to get the feel of exactly how this thing's going to pr pr progress through this through this process. So I've still got New Zealand um, uh, st buy stops and sell stops sitting on the New Zealand and Aussie dollar. That's still in play right here. So this is the chart right here. I've got that one sitting there, and I've got this one sitting right here. Now what I'm going to do is the market's starting to settle down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and take a look right here. Normally about about a couple of minutes after the news comes out. We may get some market movement. I'm going to go ahead and re-enter again on on some of these positions here. I'm going to clear up. Hang on, let's clear up all that. Let's put it back in again. And just a uh, quick note to, uh, on my and Gary, uh, I'm having I'm having to refresh Smart Trade really quickly. Uh, no just, I just there. had a, a little warning sign, so I'm going to try to hopefully get these uh, scripts to reload since I'm refreshing everything. Since so trading enabled, I'm looking for the script to reload right away. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop that in. Let's take a look and see, because now the news is starting to push the market. Now we should be we should be getting some sort of action. Let's take a look right here. So I've got now. All right, so I've been picked up on one. There it is. It looks like a sell on pound uh, pound US dollar. Picked up a, a sell on pound US dollar right here. That's the only one that's been picked up at the moment right now. Uh, uh, re-entered again after about a couple of minutes into the news. 
and, and sometimes traders, you need to go ahead and play around with the news a little bit because um, some of the news breaks out. You have a lot of spread widening. As soon as, start, as soon as the spread start tightening up a little bit, then you can go ahead and start taking action um, because uh, at least then you won't get popped with a 15 foot uh, trading stop. Now I got a 15 foot trading stop. It's very tight. Did you get picked up on anything there, Chris? Not yet. And right now, if you can look at my screen here, I've got all my scripts trying to reload. I'm about 80% in on uh, round two. So nothing got picked up. So scripts are starting to deploy and we'll see if we can get the uh, the script to pick up a few trades. So I'm still sitting at blank uh, blank trades right now. Okay. So Chris yeah. is sitting at... Yeah. So uh, Denise says I had to shut off all the scripts. So I just refreshed. I just, I just refreshed my browser and smart trader loaded back up with the same workspace and all of my scripts are now uploaded once again so uh the scripts are active hopefully the feed is stable and from there i'll look for more trades but uh, initially we're gonna go in about one minute i'm gonna refresh the currency strength chart it updates every five minutes and let's see what that reaction is with the dollar because right now we're seeing dollar strength from price action all right just got picked up on the uh, us dollar jpy so us dollar jpy got picked up so that's on the breakout to the upside uh uh, pound US dollar still bearish. I will go picked up now on the uh, Euro US dollar. If you take a look there on the sell Euro US dollar. So it looks like dollar strength. And I said to you to, at the beginning of the session, don't discount. Or don't mess with my discount. No, I'm just kidding. Um, don't <laughs> discount the fact that we may get some um, stronger dollar today. But I don't think that the strong dollar is going to be for too long. I think it's going to be short term. Now, reading the data as we did right here. Data came out and we had, uh, I mean, I can't believe that you're getting strong dollar. Not that the average earnings down at 0.0%. That is weak. That's not a good number right there. Um, so we, we expected a little bit of an uptick on that. So I don't think this is going to last for too long. Uh, well, so so I do see the comment there. Steve says they changed hourly earnings to 2.9. Uh, I'm not seeing that anywhere. I don't know if that's a different economic calendar, but I'm not seeing that update or revision at all. I'm going to go ahead and keep refreshing this right here. Year over year? Either. Okay. Let me see. Let me go to a different uh, Let me go to a different calendar really quickly. Let's go take a look at the, the calendar here with Smart Trader right here. And uh, I'm going to go to the, uh, the news here and just take a look here. Oh, that's Thursday. Drill, drill it up. Payroll, yeah. unemployment, earnings. So I've got... What the hell? Give me the actual, man. What's going Average on here? Earnings here. Oh, th sorry, that's the jobs. Average earnings. What? This doesn't show any actuals? Yeah, it's, I'm not getting actuals on this either. What the heck? Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's try a different calendar. I'm trying to think where else I can go. Uh, I've got a buy on... Uh, what have I got here? So I've got two cells, euro and pound, are both selling, which is strong dollar. Uh, uh, US dollar JPY is buying strong dollar. Uh, I, I'm starting to think this is fake news because this this cannot be the case. We cannot have this. But you know what? I've straddled the market. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, you can see here. I've also got a New Zealand setup right here. We've seen a bearish uh, block sitting up on the Euro, uh, the New Zealand US dollar. And so, but it's at the moment right now trading in the middle of that block, so it's really not going anywhere. Um, and here is the, uh, you can see right here, we've got two blocks on the euro, uh, US dollar. This is why we're actually in right now. And as the market moves and ticks in my favor, it's going to move the trading stop. You can see right here, uh, this is the trading stop right here. And it's going to adjust as price moves down lower. So as the, as the market moves down lower, it's going to adjust. I got my target all the way down here. That was just in case we had a big move and uh, it didn't happen. Price is moving very, very slowly. Yeah, we are about, I mean, we've, what's our candle so far on Euro dollar? I'm looking at the top and bottom, maybe about 30, 35 pips or so on the Euro dollar. I've got one trade in, now two trades, dollar yen, I am long, and New Zealand dollar, I am short. Uh, that is with the micro price detector. Come on, dude, not again. All right. Fudge. So All right. This so this is my, where we're at. So yeah. let's keep an eye on the chart right here. And once again, just two, no, three, three trades in. So what, what I did is, um, and we, I didn't get picked up on the Aussie or Northern New Zealand dollar at all uh, on the first round. The second round, uh, I still have not been picked up on the uh, US dollar 
uh, so the euro uh, I did get picked up on the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar trading into dollar I did not get picked up on those two so I did get picked up on three and I, if I go to the history on this right here uh, and did we get something else oh we are out on the uh, uh, the US dollar JPY like I said I didn't think that that's going to sustain itself for too long. It looks like my trading stop maybe got in the way, got me out of the market on that pair. And I'm not going to go for a third round. I'm not going to fight it again. Just two rounds, that's it. Two rounds, knockout. And so I'm out on the uh, US dollar JPY. I'm not going to trade that again. Don't think that this is news that you want to really get involved in because it's just choppy. Um, and I think they're fighting between the, the, the two data, the two pairs of data that came out right here. I don't think traders really know how to deal with this because we just had some up the tick on the uh, uh, the uh, employment change employment change was uh, the uh, the revised numbers came out at 1.68 and then we can see right here that uh, uh, we have negative numbers out today this is what's confusing the market right here is that we get bad average earnings and then we get the unemployment rate going ahead and dropping yeah um, overall this should be bearish market. Gary this should be bearish for the dollar. I mean, I, I so I have a FX Street's economic calendar. So the year-over-year -year average earnings were expected to be 3.2%. They came in at 2.9. So that was also a three-tenths of 1% miss. The average earnings for the month were expected to be 0.3. They came in at zero. That's three-tenths of 1% miss. So, I mean, the, the job numbers are missed. The average earnings on both year and monthly are misses. I mean, if the market's going to interpret an unemployment rate as a good thing, like, this is stupid. Like right. that, that is not right. a reflection of a strong labor market when people aren't making money. Absolutely. So let's take a look and see here on the dollar index. We did take a look at the dollar index earlier on. Let's take a quick look again and see how the market's shaping up on the dollar index here. Um, and oh man, I'll tell you something. I'm seeing opportunity here myself. But uh, let's go ahead and pop open the dollar index. And here is the dollar index here. I'm going to move to the uh, uh, the daily chart. Uh, actually, no. Let's go down to the. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, so this is what I said earlier on, uh, and this is this is typically what's happening right here. So everything you're saying here, Chris, and everything that's reflected in the market and the technical right now is pretty much what we anticipate, right? We said that we could have this little bounce up here, retest this level, but it'd be short lived, and then the market's going to go ahead and drop back down south. So I, when I look at this. I see this as opportunity, just because of the way the market set up right here. Now we're moving into the neutral zone on the uh, on, on the uh, the gauge, and that's only because it's gone back into what I call the neutral zone here between uh, my two indicators. So it's moving into the neutral zone right here, but this is an opportunity. Neutral zone means opportunity. So if we go to um, and let's take a pair that we actually focused on, and let's go US dollar JPY. Go to US dollar JPY right here. You can see this is also the one-hour time frame. I'm also uh, seeing it saying it's confirming we are selling right now. The uh, the gauge says that we we're, we're in a sell. This is just uh, uh, just a reaction. As soon as we start seeing some anything bearish on the US dollar JPY, it'll be time to go ahead and start selling this right here. Um, if I move to the daily time frame, I want to just take a look and see what the daily time frame is. Yeah, and the daily time frame is bearish. You can see here we, we, we're looking for a downside move on, on the, the uh, US dollar JPY. But again, traders, I, I must say, as we mentioned earlier on, if you looked at the, the chart and you saw this, you've got to think that uh, JPY is going to eventually start moving back up. And that could only be due to uh, some good news out in the trade wars. Um, what is your opinion on that, Chris? I think that is that's I have a I have a pending buy at 105.10 for that exact reason. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Now, I, I absolutely believe that too. And in fact, if I go to this right here, I'm going to do a last run here. I'm going to clear up all my positions I have right now. Clean up everything I've got here. I'm going to clear up all my stops and entry points that I've got. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take on a, a position. I'm going to be weak. Um, dollar. So I'm going to go sell New, uh, sorry, buy New Zealand. So I'm going to buy New Zealand. I'm going to buy, uh, sell uh, Swiss franc. I'm going to buy uh, the uh, US dollar, US dollar, uh, sorry, Euro US dollar, buy Aussie, and I'm going to buy pound. And I've got a trading stop loss on this right here. I'm going to see how this plays out right here because everything based on the technicals that we've just read out indicates that this is the tough movement we can expect. 
weak dollar. So this uh, that, you, that I'm seeing right now, fake news to the upside. We're going to trade it to the, uh, to the opposite side. Let's go to the, uh, this is the uh, US dollar CAD now. And so US dollar CAD expecting uh, a weaker movement. We've had some actually weak movement here in the US dollar CAD. If you take a look here, we had a little spike to the downside. Uh, now, I think US dollar CAD is something similar to like the JPY, where it gets affected by the other currency, right? It's always the other guy, right? In this case, now the uh, uh, CAD uh, may continue to be weak due to uh, US oil, and therefore uh, dollar will then continue to rally. So I guess it's a, it's a battle between which one is uh, weaker, Chris, on the US dollar or the Canadian. That's why I, I don't really like trading the Canadian dollar at all. Yeah, and um, you throw in oil on top of that, it makes it even more confusing. Yeah, but if I look over here at oil, US oil, and I go to the daily time frame, um, you can see that US oil has been dipping, but yesterday we closed out with this indecision right here. Right. So which means that we're anticipating some strength in the in US oil that could then push US dollar CAD bearish because of dollar weakness today. So that could be a bearish move. Now that noise that you're hearing, by the way, traders, is actually uh, the market uh, creating um, uh, a reaction in the trading stop loss. So let's go back to the chart right here. So you can see there, I went in. I was buying on the euro, buying on dollar, uh, on pound, selling uh, US dollar JPY, buying uh, Aussie US dollar, buying uh, New Zealand US dollar. And uh, let's see how this. This will be the third strike. Uh, after this, I'm done. Because if this doesn't move, Chris, then uh, in in a direction, then we're pretty much done. In fact. We'll give it up until about 9.30. If we haven't already got popped at 9.30, uh, we're probably going to go ahead and just uh, kill it at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm so this is the uh, the second time I've refreshed the charts and I'm still in only two trades total, but I'm watching, monitoring. I'll see if anything else gets picked up. If you look at just price alone, there really hasn't been a lot of movement in the last you know 15 minutes. We've seen about a 25 pip move or so. The high to low on the candle on the euro dollar is about 39 pips. Um, it's it's only moved about a net 20 or so based on current prices, about 32 pips of actual movement. So we're still seeing some wick highs and wick lows across most of the dollar pairs this morning. So strength wise, I mean, here's the currency strength chart. It, this updates, uh, we'll update this again now, I guess, because it's 845. Um, you know, the, the reaction to the downside first and then the reaction up, it's starting to settle in. The CAD is getting noticeably stronger. Uh, the Swiss and the New Zealand have taken a little dive from being stronger this morning. They're taking a dive and going back to neutral. The CAD is looking like it's regaining some strength this morning. Um, you know, perhaps the CAD ends up uh, showing up as one of the stronger pairs as the morning develops. So, and really, I mean, think about the, the balancing act here. I mean, the Euro CAD went virtually straight up uh, from, you know, 44.30. All the way up to four. I mean, that's crazy. That's a 240 pip rally, uh, pretty much in a straight line. So it makes sense that we're getting a little bit of a correction there uh, on a Friday. Profit taking and just some balance on that currency pair. CAD Swiss, same thing. I, I was tempted to buy the CAD Swiss this morning. Uh, it only gave me about 25 pips to work with, but it came right back to where I expected it to. Uh, I just didn't jump in and buy it. I thought it was a little bit higher than I wanted. Uh, anyway, CAD's, CAD's showing some strength. So uh, looks like pound CAD back to the downside, a little bit of neutral. Gary, what, what are your thoughts on pound pairs this week? Just off, off subject to dollar. I mean, I noticed just a lot of wild volatility of the pound. So this currency strength chart, there were several days this week where we had the pound, you know, really, really strong and really, really weak and really, really strong. Uh, it was all over the map with, um, I mean, I know there was some optimism with the, uh, the Irish backstop or the Irish border. And there was some talk. I think Boris Johnson was actually in front of parliament yesterday talking and uh, that that had some optimism. Um, they're looking at, you know, I, I guess it's possibly bracing for a softer Brexit, if at all a Brexit on the 31st. I know Boris Johnson is still wanting to to have some type of Brexit plan in place and official by October 31st. Uh, whether or not that goes through, we're not sure. But anyway, the pound's been pretty crazy this week. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. And uh, you can see right here, I'm actually at the moment right now thinking the same thing. In fact, the Trading, uh, trading this morning uh, has not really uh, given us any sort of movement that we needed uh, before the weekend, but we, we can certainly see that uh, uh, pound is showing a little bit of strength. Uh, we've been in a recovery. I think I, uh, in my weekly outlook uh, video that I posted out this, uh, this week, 
I actually, Chris, I actually spoke about the pound and I said that I didn't expect too much rally in the pound this week. I said maybe the latter part of the week, but I didn't think that we we're going to get some uh, major rally in the pound itself um, because it was in a correction mood. And, and so if we go to the chart right here, this is the uh, uh, euro pound. Not a lot of re reaction of the euro pound. We are setting up into a neutral zone, which means you're going to stand aside, wait for it to start to, uh, setting up some sort of directional bias. Uh, but if I go to the pound Aussie right here, and I'm just going to clear up some chart right here, uh, clear up some data. So if you see here, uh, we did see a pound uh, dipping most of today. We had a nice little push uh, uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, so we did that, we saw that dip, came back down here, we had that push. This to me is just a retest before the market goes back up again. So I said to traders to start getting ready for next week's trading on the pound. I think next week's trading on the pound is going to be really, really good. We've got a good move on pound CAD uh, over the last couple of days. In fact, uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday was, was good. Thursday not as convincing on the rally. We've seen a bit of a dip at the moment right now, but we are between, again, it's in the neutral zone of my uh, indicators right here. So I'm looking for a pound to pound cat to actually go ahead and start breaking back up north. So this bit of recovery that we've seen in U.S. oil could be just as a retracement. I don't think it's going to hold. I'm hoping that I'm right on this because we've got support there, support here, support here. Now we're going to see it break through this key resistance. If I break through that key resistance, it's on its way to the races so i'm going to go to the jpy right here too jpy also it's a recovery move we spoke about in our, in our learning trading room this week Chris, and it was the fact that uh, we saw the market going ahead and coming back to retest this level right here come back to retest this level this is resistance now this becomes support we can see a little bit of indecision right here i'm expecting price to move back up again hopefully this is going to be good pound and also good trade war coming you know be between us and china yeah um, there's some news coming out that's going to be positive i'm like um, so swiss yen cad yen dollar yen to me they all technically look like they're ready for some bullishness i personally closed out for some small losses this week on the yen um just just because it just it's just not ready you know it's like i, I was in uh, i was in aussie yen um we were positive going into the week and then the aussie rate cut happened on monday night uh like late monday night so tuesday's trading and that pushed us into negative territory. And I just thought rather than letting it get worse on two positions, we just closed out. So small loss on Aussie yen, small loss on New Zealand. Actually, yeah, small loss on New Zealand yen. Um, Euro yen was also a small loss. And then a, a break even on uh, CAD yen and like a plus five on dollar yen. So I, I don't like to give the, the, the yens a lot of flexibility. I think the yens are, you're either right on the yen and you're going to make a lot of money or you're wrong on the yen. You might as well get out and not fight it. So I still like the technical outlook of seeing some yen weakness, seeing some optimism on the trade war. We should have some on, ongoing negotiations for this month. I know that uh, that, was, that was at least the rumor last month. That's what kind of uh, prevented the catastrophe back in August, September, is that China and U.S. would resume negotiations in October. So I think, again, like the market is kind of looking at anything to like have an excuse and build some optimism uh but it's it, it's you, you can sense the global slowdown you can sense the data is not exactly supportive uh but at the same time it's like they're still hanging on the market's still willing to hang on it's still willing to you know not let uh not let chaos happen so it's just going to happen during the presidential election <laughs> that's probably what's going to do it'll just it'll yeah. just hang on for dear life and, and for the next you know 12 months and then after that it's like all right all bets are off we protect we've, we've done it long enough now it's time to just let it free fall for a while yeah yeah absolutely absolutely well you can see that uh, uh i am actually uh, at this point in time already getting ready for the weekend uh, hey, because, uh, nice. clear, clear <laughs> the market hey listen yeah eagles are gonna take a, take a win again this week if you're an eagles fan woohoo eagles go eagles Dude, right? the lions uh, the lions walked away with a w i was so happy I don't know how. I don't know. I mean, I know the Eagles were down like three starters, but it's like, man, the Lions. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. I'm liking it. We need some luck. Eh? We need some luck eh? with all the injuries that we got currently right now. Similar to what, what's going on with the market right now. There's a lot of injuries. We got injuries in JPY. <laughs> we got injuries in a town. It's just everyone's taking a beating. But hey, listen here. As long as you get up, and I'm, I'm referring to the pounds, as long as you get up and start running again, I'm happy because i got a couple of buys and holding, uh, holding on, top, uh, on, on the, uh, the pound crosses. So, uh, but yeah, uh, here's a very dead uh, non-farm once again. Nothing, nothing different to what we've been seeing over the last 
few sessions. Um, let's take a look over here, Chris. I think we need to go ahead and take a look and see what else we have coming out the next couple of weeks regarding news. Sure. Um, let's take a look right here. If I go to the uh, uh, this month, uh, let's take a look here. We've got we've just finished non-farm payroll. Uh, we've got uh, the FOM, uh, FOM, uh, FOMCM uh, meeting minutes taking place next Wednesday. That's going to be at 2 p.m. That's going to be interesting to see what they go ahead and disclose. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. We've got the monetary policy meeting accounts here from the ECB. Uh, I'm not going to be too excited about that. CAD news. I think I'm going to be excited about the CAD news next week. Take a look at the unemployment, oh, sorry, employment and unemployment rate. Uh, that's going to be Friday news. Uh, and that's out at 8.30. Then we've got a couple of bank holidays heading into the uh, mid part of the, the month. Uh, we've got monetary policy meeting minutes out in Australia on, on the 14th. Uh, we've got employment change for the Aussies. That's going to be data that I definitely also want to look at for the 16th. On the 16th, we've got 8.30 employment change and unemployment rate for the Aussies. Um, and that's going to be interesting based on what they've been doing with the rates over the last uh, couple of uh, sessions. Uh, we've got your ECB press conference coming out on the 24th. So not not major, major news. Uh, you notice moves. how they're finishing. Look at how they're finishing the month. Isn't that ridiculous? How they're yeah. finishing the month, stacking up a CAD rate decision and FOMC. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's going to be a wild be interesting. month. And what, is, what has happened on the 30th? What's the D-Day on 30th of October? I mean, you got Halloween on the 31st. <laughs> 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 I'm referring to the Brexit. Oh, I thought that was 31st. Uh, yeah, yeah, th that is the 31st. Brexit yeah. is 31st. Yeah, but the, like I said, you're, st you're stocking everything up on the 30th. Oh, for sure. It's, it's going to be chaos. Like, it'll be, it'll yeah. be amazing. It'll be great volatility. I would say that'd be a great day if you want to be a scalper and uh, come out of the woods for some high movement. That I would think that 24 to 48 hours between the 30th and 31st, we're going to see some fireworks. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Chris, I don't know if you want to go ahead and wrap it up on your end, and then I can go ahead and do the final close. Yeah, I'll wrap it up. I, I, so my micro price detector is negative five pips for the morning. Uh, I'm fine closing that down for the week for me. Uh, Aussie CAD closed up for 500 pips this morning. I, I saw that. I had notifications on my MetaTrader 4. Um, I am still holding Aussie Swiss long. I'm holding uh, New Zealand Swiss long, New Zealand CAD I'm long, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar long. Euro CAD, I closed out for over 200 pips. Euro Swiss, I'm still holding. I've got a lot of positions that I'm, I, I've been you know, happy with. And, and overall, I like the direction that we're heading. Uh, I would like to get some yen pairs going. I think the dollar yen off of 105 would be a great buy trade to take it back up towards 108 or higher. Uh, if we can get a level at like, I, I got the Swiss yen at 106, uh, 106.30 to buy it low. But I'm, we might be missing that trade because it's already starting to react to that today. Um, so, we're, I mean, again, we're, we're active in the flex room. We're taking some good trades. We've got some good profits this week, and uh, we're just going to keep plugging away. You know, the good thing is, Will, I, I like the positions we're in. We're not heavy on any pound pairs. We're not heavy on any dollar pairs. We're not heavy on any yen pairs. It's like we're just trading the things that are really good technical setups and focused on that, and I'll take that every day versus trying to follow along with all the news this day and this day, and it changes every stinking day, so... Um, I like where we're at. I just think that, uh, you know, walking away with minus five today is not a bad deal. Yeah. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my scripts so I don't have to worry about this anymore. I'm going to turn off my scripts, take my minus uh, five right now, and just walk away and say happy Friday, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Well, it wasn't a, a, it wasn't a good run for me. Uh, the markets are currently at the moment right now pretty choppy. It's, uh, we've seen, well, at the time the moose came out, we seen a bit of movement right now. I'm still seeing a bit of uh, um, weak pound coming out. I'm actually going through the, the, the different pound pairs right here, and I see pound CAD, which means that U.S. oil is starting to move a little bit uh, to the upside, which is not unusual, right? We're expecting some sort of correction in U.S. oil. This is U.S. oil right here. It's the one-hour time frame. We are seeing a bit of a rally on U.S. oil. I don't see this holding for too long. We may have this rally for the most part of the day, but then go ahead and settle down, and, and then eventually start to dip down. I'm going to keep my eyes on the uh, the uh, Canadian crosses. So next week, in my weekly outlook, I'll probably be looking at the, the Canadian crosses. Keep an eye on that. Looking for some sort of uh, weaker uh, uh, U.S. oil to affect uh, Aussie CAD and Pound CAD. Those are the two that I'm really focused on. And then, of course, the uh, uh, JPY crosses. Definitely keep my eye on the JPY crosses for any news that comes across the board because uh, I'm expecting some positive news to come out of the trade wars based on technical analysis. 
as you saw, saw with the uh, US dollar JPY, very strong support right here, even with the bad data out the US, I think we're going to hold above that support and continue to rally. So again, thinking maybe some positive uh, trade war uh, uh, you know, news. And then, then the other one is, of course, all the pound pairs across the board as well. I think we're in a little bit of a dip, which means a retracement move. I think we should see the pound start to rally a little bit further up, uh, at least before we get to the 31st of October when they make uh, the decision on Brexit. Um, so expect some news out of that as well. I'll be focused on the, on, on the pound pairs. Um, as I said at the beginning of this week, I didn't expect too much uh, sort of opportunities on the pound, although there were good, some good intraday scalping moves. But, uh, but for midterm, uh, or midterm, short term rallies, nothing at the moment right now for this week until next week. Next week, I think it's going to be a, a good week for us for, uh, for trading. And if we go back to the, uh, the news for next week, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up right here. Uh, and I'm going to have to bring it all the way here. And then that noise that you hear, by the way, is that trade started tick, tick, tick. So let's take a look at next week's uh, news. Next week's news. As you can see right here, not a whole bunch of stuff that we need to be too focused on that's going to drive the market. We've got some uh, meeting minutes coming out. We've got bank holidays early in the week, up until Tuesday. No data, no major data coming out until Tuesday, uh, sorry, until Wednesday. Wednesday, we've got then, of course, the FOMC meeting minutes. Then uh, through the, the rest of the week, just some small bit of data. You know, uh, At the end of the week, Friday, probably the big hoo-ha. Uh, with the uh, uh, employment change for the Canadians and unemployment rate. But other than that, it's not going to be too fantastic. And uh, again, trades are ticking along the way, but certainly not moving anywhere. So um, traders, that pretty much wraps it up. And um, let me leave, leave you with this thought. Um, go Eagles. All right. Go Eagles. That's all I'm going to say. Go Eagles. All right. Once again, traders, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do. Also, if you take a look over here on the page, you can see that I've got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, I got it. Social media, connect with me through social media. I know Chris has got his up as well. Uh, Chris has got his up. Let me go ahead and post uh, Chris's right here. Chris has got his Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, is email address. What? You give me email address? Yeah, man. Crazy, Look, man. if You're people crazy. want to contact me and ask how to get involved or how to join a live session, let's do it. You know, this is this I, is for everybody. We're doing this for, I mean, we had over 400 people today in the session. It was a great session to at least be live together. It was definitely a dud of a session. Um, but like I said, walking away with minus five is not the end of the world. We'll come back and we'll take it next week. We had a great week of trading. On that note, I saw that Paul was able to share uh, it's been a very good week for me, up over 1,500 pips of the week and still in 12 other positions, very happy. So where's everybody else at for the week? Before we wrap up and officially sign off, where are we at this week? We're making some pips. Denise says 1,565 pips yep. for me. Awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah, we've got some cool. JPY weakness coming in. Aussie yen's going up. Uh, Swiss yen, CAD yen, dollar yen. Everything's looking good for JPY weakness, which I'm liking. Again, um, perhaps the early movement is like, well, it's kind of inevitable that the, the Bank of Japan will defend it. And with the weaker U.S. data, it probably means that the Fed is likely going to be cutting rates again. So the market's kind of anticipating all this good stuff for risk appetite. Uh, nice. Yeah. Eric says up 1,000 pips. We got some 1K club members today, Gary. Ed's up 975 pips. Paul, 1145, 9.2%. Awesome. I like that. 9.2%. I'm more into, into you know, pips. You know, that's great for the guys that are making pips. But the, those guys are posting 9.2% gain. That is awesome. Paul, well done. Congratulations to you chat coming up over here and i've also seen uh, a couple other traders as well making some money one's made some money as well up, Joe's is up 200 pips which i don't know what that equates to percentages but post your percentage uh, there we go uh, trish says i'm up to trish walker says i'm up 3.13 percent she gave me the one the one one three as well so 3.13 i gotta say it all right percent up for the week fantastic there we've got laura up 834 pips Alice just closed out with uh, 612 pips this week alone. Fantastic. Well, great, guys. Uh, David, up 1,500 pips. Are you kidding me? 1,500 pips. You've got to trade for me. All right, we've got a couple of traders right here uh, that are also doing very well. Fantastic. Well, great, guys. It's good to see all the good, good trades uh, that are coming through for the week. Hasn't been a fantastic week, but we did have some movement in the, ca the Canadian crosses. So we've got to at least say... Uh, you know, congratulations to the CAD for giving us some pips this week because it was a good run on Pound Canadian as well as Aussie Canadian. I know the US Canadian also uh, also created some opportunities. 
Well, traders, that's it for us, for me, and for Chris. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll definitely go ahead and shoot another email out for the next non-farm payroll. Hopefully, hopefully, sometime this year, we're going to get a great non-farm payroll. And uh, we're going to make uh, trading and non-farm payroll great again. I'm just kidding. All right. Oh, that was so me bad. And Chris, have a <laughs> great weekend. And go Eagles. All right. Take care, everybody. Hey, Gary, our next session is probably going to be FOMC on the 30th when uh, it's going to be Halloween, pre-Brexit. FOMC, CAD rate decision. We're going to have a wild day. So we should do a live session there for the uh, FOMC. Absolutely, man. I'll tell you something with Halloween coming up. You definitely want to be in the session because I have got a fantastic costume for that for that session. Oh, nice. You're going to have to wait and see what it is. And the market's got trick-or-treats up their sleeves too. <laughs> yes, they do. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll have a good weekend and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.